Hey, what's up guys? Spencer Rhodes here. So, The Walking Dead Season 9, Episode 13 aired. This big epic moment that everyone, well not everyone, but a lot of people were anticipating the big fight between Beta and Daryl. It has happened, and some people are disappointed in it. Some people are disappointed in how it went down, how the fight ended, just how the entire fight was. And, you know, the fact that Daryl won, and Daryl didn't get too badly hurt, and Beta kind of got his ass kicked. And it was kind of lame because Beta is one of the, the new big villains and he's a badass in the comics. But honestly, I've been thinking about it. You know, I've been thinking about the tone of the episode. How how the episode, for the most part, was kind of lighthearted and goofy all, like, all the way through. I mean, keep in mind, this is the same episode where a bunch of like savages are, are talked out of violence because of a movie. <laughs> you know, and this is this is the same episode where it's like Scooby Doo shit, where where Connie, Henry, and Lydia all run off, and then Dog runs off with them just because, and Daryl's like, "No, Dog, wait, Dog!" Like that is some Cartoon Network Looney Tunes ass shit right there. I did not expect that scene in particular, <laughs> but I mean, the entire episode was kind of goofy and lighthearted, and I know why. I know why because it's the calm before the storm. For those of you that don't know, well, for one thing, episode 14 is probably going to be a dark episode because episode 14 is going to have flashbacks that are, are finally going to give the answers as to what happened, you know, what's the beef between Maggie and Michonne. We might get Maggie again. We might see the Oceanside people die. Uh, we might see Eduardo die because Eduardo's been uh, MIA. We might see something violent, at least something violent happen because... There was a preview from a few months ago that shows Michonne angrily slashing at something with her sword, and I think it, I think she's at Alexandria or Hilltop, and she's she's like she's got like a bloodied face. So something violent is going to happen in episode fourteen, and it's called the the title of episode fourteen is Scars. So I we're going to find out most of the mysteries about you know what happened during the six year time jump that that got everyone upset. Probably going to find out about Daryl and Michonne's ex scars on their backs. I mean, the title of the episode is Scars, so I think we're going to find out, you know, what happened, what went down. But episode 15, oh man, episode 15. <laughs> That's going to be the episode where there's the heads on spikes. And this is not a spoiler, this is something that was officially released by AMC. It's the episode plot synopsis. And the titles, these these are not spoiler leaks, these are official things. I should be allowed to talk about them. But yeah, episode 15 is going to be when the fair happens and when the Whispers take 12 characters and decapitate them and put their walker heads on sticks. So episode 14 and 15 are going to be dark episodes is what I'm getting at. So for episode 13 to be sort of lighthearted and, and funny and goofy, that kind of just makes sense. You know, just you want to mix it up. You know, you, you don't want too much darkness. You don't want too much funny. It's always good to, to have sort of a funny episode a little bit before um, the, the really dark shit happens. In season six, you know, season six ended with Negan, um, you know, he's about to kill Abraham and Glenn. And he, he pretty much kills Abraham, and, you know, we see it from the, the POV shot, but it's still a dark episode, and it's, and it, and it's a dark ending to season six. And then the season seven premiere is definitely dark, because we see it. We see Abraham and Glenn violently die. We see the group, the group get just destroyed emotionally and devastated. So what do we get in season six a few episodes earlier? We get Daryl and Rick just like chilling out, having a road trip, driving a, driving around in a truck, listening to music, chasing after Jesus, dealing with Jesus. Jesus. It's, the entire episode is like a comedy. It's the same thing. It's the calm before the storm. The happy, funny things happening before the dark things happening. And, and given how just how dark episode 14 and 15 are going to be, and I promise they're going to be dark episodes, at least 15. 14 is probably going to have some dark flashbacks, but I mean, I'm not 100% certain on that. But episode 15 is definitely going to be a dark episode. So for episode 13 to sort of have some lighthearted moments and, and for the Daryl Beta fight to be to be light, to be lighthearted, that kind of makes sense. I mean, for uh, I get where people are coming from and you know wanting Daryl to get the shit beat out of him, you know Daryl to get broken and then you know you know build back up again and recover, but it's it's just when you really think about it, Beta beating the shit out of Daryl is kind of unnecessary. I mean, 
if the heads on spikes happen, Daryl is probably going to be upset. I'm sure that Daryl is going to lose at least someone that he cares about. That's going to break Daryl. That's going to be a, you know a huge moment for Daryl to be broken, and and I don't think um him getting his ass kicked by Beta was necessary. I mean Daryl knows all about abuse. He's he, I mean he's got a billion scars on his back. You know, he he was abused by his dad when he was a kid. He was abused by Negan. I mean keep in mind when when uh, you know when he punched Negan in the face he he basically caused Glenn's death. You know, he got his shoulder blown off by Dwight before that happened. And then he, he had to live with the guilt of Glenn's death and, and him feeling responsible for it. And then he got locked up and treated like an animal. And he got beat up by the saviors. So Daryl knows all about abuse. And Daryl knows all about suffering and losses and, and being broken. You know, he was broken when he lost Beth. He was broken when Glenn died. And Rick's... You know, Rick's supposed death, Rick's fake death, whatever. That was sort of a repeat of Glenn. It was kind of a mirror of Glenn's death in that Daryl did things that caused it to happen. So he feels responsible and he broke down and he cried. And then on top of that, he spent six years, most of six years, on his own, out in the wild, with nothing to keep him company but a dog. This guy has suffered. This guy has been through shit. Him getting his ass beaten by Beta would would just be repetitive, honestly. It's unnecessary. Especially with the heads on spikes happening. That's devastating enough. We don't need Daryl getting beat up just for, you know, the sake of another dark moment. I get it. I get it. It's Beta. Beta's a badass. You know, Beta's this 200-pound, you know, 210-pound guy. He should be able to just throw Daryl around like a toothpick. He He needs to be imposing. He needs to be a threat. But just because Daryl won this fight against Beta and Daryl got the best of Beta, it doesn't mean that Beta's down for the count. Beta could get his revenge. I mean, I think that's what the episode was implying at the end, that Beta was angry at Daryl. Beta has it out for Daryl. Beta is going to want to get revenge on Daryl. And a good way for Beta to get revenge on Daryl is to be, you know, be one of the whispers that, that takes away some of the characters and cuts their heads off. You know, Beta could be one of the ones that actually does it, one of the ones that's responsible for the heads on spikes. That could be Beta's way of sort of getting revenge on Daryl and hurting Daryl. I guarantee, I can almost guarantee that's what's going to happen. That's going to be the big revenge thing that happens against Daryl. So, it doesn't really destroy Beta's image or anything. I think that Beta can still be this big imposing threat and sort of like season six you know season nine has had a lot of the whispers die but it's only a matter of time before they get theirs it's only a matter of time before all the whispers have gotten killed it's going to be something that that bites the good guys in the ass you know season six you know rick and the rest of his group were killing all the saviors and then eventually that bit them in the ass because negan killed abraham and glenn I think the same thing is going to happen in season nine. You know, yeah, the whispers are keep getting killed like flies every episode, but then in episode fifteen, we're going to have this huge, huge, devastating loss of twelve characters, possibly, you know, including most likely Ezekiel and Rosita, maybe even someone else like Henry. You know, something like that. So Beta can still um, really hurt the characters. Beta can still really hurt Daryl. Plus. Since Beta particularly has it out for Daryl, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a round two between Beta and Daryl. And maybe this time, Beta does kick Daryl's ass a little bit more. I mean, you, you wouldn't want you wouldn't want round two to be a repeat of round one. So yeah, I think that you know Beta can still hurt Daryl, and you know there's still time. I mean, Beta's a, a new character, so Beta's got time to do some shit. Beta's got time to hurt the characters and hurt Daryl and and get his revenge. Plus, I honestly like the fight. I, I like that, that Daryl was sort of, you know, he's smaller and he's more nimble. So he, in a way, he's faster than Beta. So he, he used that to his advantage. And then he hid under a floor tile and pushed Beta off, off, the, off the balcony, off the elevator shaft or whatever. I mean, that was creative. I like that. Um, and I like, I really loved how, how Daryl, like, spit down the, the, the elevator shaft and then you like he had dropped the, this his little knife earlier on the floor, so he like angrily walks up to the knife and angrily grabs it and just stomps away. Like that's such a Daryl thing to do. I love that. Um, I, I I I love that little moment. I thought it was a it was a cool fight. It was a well filmed fight, 
And yeah, Beta did have several times where we could have just murdered Daryl and ripped his head off of off of his spine. But Beta wanted to know where Lydia was before killing Daryl. So that kind of, I know it doesn't completely justify it, but it also sort of justifies it a little bit. Like there's an explanation as to why Beta didn't just instantly snap Daryl's neck because he did get a few chances. I mean, you know, when Beta slammed Daryl against the wall, he most definitely had the upper hand in the fight. You know, he could have just killed Daryl right then and there. But Beta was wanting information. Beta was wanting to know, um where Lydia was, and that gave Daryl just an, just enough of an opening to, to get out of it and win the fight. And yeah, there's a little bit of plot armor mixed in, but there's also a little bit of logic mixed in because Beta was wanting to know where Lydia was. And the thing about Daryl is, we don't have Rick anymore. You know, we, we, we Rick is gone, and, and I think that Daryl kind of got a bigger role because Rick's gone, I mean, he, he he's almost seemed like the main character lately with, with all the things he's been doing in the last few episodes. So, with Rick gone, it kind of... I mean, do we really want Daryl, like, the big leading guy, one of the big leading guys to, to, to get, you know, broken arms, broken legs, you know, um, just a broken jaw, and, ha and have him have to spend several episodes in the hospital, or in the, whatever, the, the, the nurse's, uh, the, ner the nurse's room, or whatever, with Sadiq, or Enid tending to him, I mean, does that, is that something you really want with Daryl, you want Daryl to spend several key episodes in the story, just stuck in, in a hospital room? I mean, that doesn't sound like the right thing to do with Daryl. Especially with Rick gone, like, Daryl is, the, like, the big action guy, you know, he's the big guy that goes out and fights, you know, he's, he, he, he goes out, you know, he goes outside and he, and he does all the action stuff, it, I don't, it doesn't sound right to me for him to, to be locked up in some hospital with a bunch of broken bones, like, I get it, I get it, but, eh, just, I, I think it's just, it's too much, it's it's just a bad idea to have Daryl incapacitated for too long. You know, Daryl is kind of like just the action hero guy, so he needs to be able to to not get hurt too badly. So I think all things considered, it makes sense how the fight went down, and it makes sense what happened with Daryl. Um, and I'm not against it. I'm kind of glad he won the fight. And like I said, it's just, it was just sort of a happy, um, lighthearted episode. Um, which is going to proceed what I imagine is going to be the last three episodes being much, much more dark. So it's, it's just the calm before the storm. So overall, I'm okay with Daryl winning the fight. I think Daryl needed a win. I mean, Daryl has had a lot of bad times. You know, he kind of caused Glenn's death. He kind of caused Rick's death. He was an outcast and was out on his own for for six years during the time jump. You know, he he, he was pretty fucked up about Beth dying. He um he, he's had a lot a lot of losses. You know, he I think he needed a win. So I'm kind of glad he got a win. But yeah, and it's not because I don't like Beta, I love Beta, I love Ryan Hurst, but I still think that, that this isn't the be-all, end-all for Beta. Beta's got time to, to still leave his mark. I wouldn't completely give up on Beta just because he kind of lost one fight. It's not the end of the world. But yeah, anyway, that's all I have for this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Don't be shy. Hit that like and subscribe. I'm not going anywhere. I make one to two Walking Dead videos per day, so please hit that subscribe button. Right now we are at 428 subscribers. My goal is to try to get to 500 in the next few months. So just remember, every subscriber counts, every bit of support matters, and is very, very appreciated. Hopefully we can get to that goal of 500. Anyway, with all that said, I am Spencer Rhodes, and I will see you guys later. Bye!